So I will be talking about Lectures Without Borders, which is this initiative that I am actually the CEO of. Um, so Lectures Without Borders aim to in enable traveling scientists to inspire high school students. You will notice that both traveling and high are a bit between brackets because we also work with elementary schools. We also work with scientists that are working from home or in their own communities. So this is uh, a bit flexible. But the idea is to uh, enable scientists to inspire school students. Um, so the learning of science, uh, technology, engineering and mathematics I guess we all agree because we are here um, that learning it from an early age is important not only for uh, developing critical thinking, but also as a tool to empower a new generation to face the challenges of the 21st century. However, and unfortunately, uh, the resources available to schools can vary a lot from region to region and from country to country and from school to school. And this variability may affect the possibilities of both students and teachers to access high quality STEM education. Um, this difference can create and maybe even perpetuate the inequalities in access to STEM and to STEM career. Um, millions of teachers around the world, and I know that many of the ones that are attending this talk right now, are putting a lot of effort into making STEM subjects more engaging. Um, they encourage students to participate through hands-on activities, to project-based learning, and using a lot of pedagogical tools that they continuously try to improve and to refine. Um, I know that scientists, uh, that uh, sorry, that um, teachers are doing a huge effort to try to become um, like good role models for the students, and at the same time. Um, the science community itself, the academic uh, community, the academic institutions all around the world are actively working to increase the number of outreach activities that they, they organize and they host to try to reach a wider population of, of children and of adolescents. However, there's always uh, a downside of these activities that, this, uh, that they tend to take place in close proximity to these academic institutions that organize them. Um, and therefore, sometimes they reach to underprivileged schools or to rural schools or to minority schools can be limited. At the same time, um, there's inequalities in access to these outreach activities, not only from the side of schools when they're in rural areas or in low resources areas, but also uh, from scientists. Scientists themselves, sometimes when they come from underprivileged situations, they also have less opportunities to participate in these outreach activities. So these inequalities uh, can also mean that they might not be able, like underprivileged or underrepresented communities in science can also not participate uh, in these activities. And both this underrepresentation of groups of scientists and the impossibilities of schools in rural areas or with low resources to join these activities are both actively contributing to perpetuating inequalities and stereotypes in STEM in general. So um, Lectures Without Borders, which I will sometimes abbreviate as LEVIVO, um, aims to contribute to solve the problem of unequal access to science outreach by organizing lectures of scientists in schools. Lectures Without Borders started in 2017 when a group of friends, it was just four friends, that started organizing lectures in local schools during their own professional trips and even sometimes their um, personal trips. And they did this by reaching schools through their own personal connection, reaching out to friends, reaching out to colleagues, trying to see if someone knew a school in the place they were going. And basically the whole network started growing from there. Our equation is very simple. Whenever a scientist travels, for example, to attend a conference or to visit their families because they are living somewhere else, we find a school in their destination and we coordinate a lecture for them. However, of course, um, in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic um, led to the cancellation of most of these tri uh, trips of the scientists and the closing of millions of schools around the world. And that was sort of a challenge that suddenly became an opportunity for us because we started in this context <clears throat> to offer our lectures in the form of webinars for the schools that were an, at that time relaying only or mostly on online education. Our webinars became an opportunity to reach millions of students around the world and engage them in the learning of STEM subjects from their 
their own homes. And that's why I said that it was a challenge because it, it involved trying to adapt to a completely different environment. And of course, it took a lot of learning from us and we are still learning from it. Um, but it did allow us to reach schools that usually might be a bit uh, outside of our activities. Because like I said, our initial activity is a scientist comes to a place to, for example, to attend a conference and then they give a lecture. The problem is what happens with those schools that are not in um, in uh, cities that usually host these types of events. Maybe scientists are not coming to a small town. And this is how um, lectures, online lectures, allowed us to reach those uh, schools. At the same time, uh, using online tools also helped us uh, organize a series of open lectures. For example, we had a whole series on climate change and climate action um, that helped us engage dozens of schools around Europe and the world. And we also managed to open an online science congress. Um, this science congress is a science uh, congress that happens annually on planetary sciences. It's called the Europlanet Science Congress. Um, and in general, it was happening in person until 2020 when it started happening online. And we opened it to schools and we allowed um, students to attend the scientific talks. And uh, we gave them also talks that were um, age appropriate and were designed specifically for them. And we also gave them other activities. Actually, Scientix um, was one of our partners in our first EPSC in 2020, um, organizing also an art context for students. Um, it was a, a, an amazing opportunity and we reached hundreds of schools around the world. So those are types of things that maybe offline we wouldn't have been able to do. Also, uh, our online activities allowed us to cross continents and time zones in a way that we have never achieved before. For example, when we organized a lecture from a scientist from Ecuador <clears throat> in a school in Indonesia, which has a time difference of 12 hours. Um, so we had to find a time. It was like in the evening in one country and in the morning of Saturday in, in Indonesia. And they, the school and the scientists both became very engaged in trying to find the time that was available, like uh, good for, for everyone. It was a really, really nice experience to see how uh, both the school and the scientists were extremely uh, privileged to participate in something that otherwise, without online tools, maybe would have never happened. Um, at the same time, online lectures also allowed us to give voice to scientists from the global south, showing that good science is done everywhere. Um, this is helping us fight a stereotype that is very common, um, that science or good science only happens maybe in Europe or in the US. And giving the voice to scientists, for example, in this case, in March 2021, there was this lecture from a scientist from Nigeria. Uh, he gave a webinar on linear algebra to a school in Austria um, and allowed the students not only to, of course, learn a very interesting subject, but also to learn about the culture of the speaker. Many of the questions um, that the students themselves asked were about this. Um, they, it also allowed us to bring science to schools that were in cities where, who usually don't hold scientific conference and maybe changes, uh, the chances of, of scientists visiting are lower. Uh, for example, we have this school in Reggio Emilia in Italy or a school in Tricala in Greece that have been engaged in many, many, many online activities. And both of them have not yet um, host a, a scientist in person. However, and even though we greatly appreciate the benefits of online lectures, we are aware that they lack the novelty and the personal connection brought by in-person events. Therefore, now that most in-person activities are resuming, we started organizing both uh, online and in-person activities. For example, this planetary science uh, conference that I mentioned, um, this year it actually took place in person in Granada in Spain. And what we did was organize um, both offline activities with schools that were close to the conference venue in Granada and around Granada. But we also organized online activities that we opened to all the schools. Actually, these events, uh, the online events, finished yesterday. Um, so we, by now, our network includes over 320 scientists from over 50 countries, and we can reach over 1,000 schools. Um, the number of lectures that we organize also has grown from around or even less than one a month to over 10 a month. And we reach, which each lecture will reach many, many more uh, students than we used to. 
we are also um, currently working on turning our website, which is levyworld.org, uh, into a platform that allows for a better communication between scientists and schools um, so that we can also guarantee the respect of a code of conduct from both sides um, that all our research but, um, scientific material and educational material is available in our platform and that we can facilitate the exchange between all the members of our network. Um, because we started as a very small group, we are trying to find organic ways to grow without losing these connections and this idea of we are a network, we are not just an organization that is centralizing the communication between schools and, and scientists. But at the same time, we want to guarantee that uh, the schools are receiving people that they can trust, um, that at the same time, the scientists know where they're going and how to get there and what is going to happen when they uh, arrive to the school and basically contribute to making this um, an activity that is easier for both sides and more rewarding for both sides. Also, one of our biggest plans for 2023 uh, is a project on women in STEM, in which we aim to challenge students to identify women working on STEM subjects within their own communities, to increase the visibility of women and to help them become role models for a new generation. We are currently trying to find funding for this project. So um, I would, of course, greatly appreciate if you uh, let us know of any finding sources that could help us make this true. Um, our lectures not only expose students to new knowledge, but also they provide uh, new role models. They allow for cultural exchange um, between scientists and students, and they help fight the stereotypes uh, about who can be a scientist and improve the scientist communication skills by providing them with feedback at, after each event. Our dream is that one day every school feels comfortable receiving a scientist and every scientist feels welcome in every school. And most importantly, that a permanent dialogue between scientists and students become part of every normal day at work or at school. If you want to know more about it, uh, do not hesitate to visit our website. There's a QR code there that will leave you, uh, lead you to our website. You can register if you are a teacher, uh, register your institution. If you are a scientist, you can also register as a lecturer. And if you want to know more information, you can also email us at info at With that, I thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>